Hey guys, it's Steve from the Effort here to review La Casa de Papel Season 2. Not Money Heist. Stupid name. If you've come here for some reason, seeing it as Season 2, and haven't seen Season 1 yet, I would highly suggest maybe check, taking a look at my review of Season 1. More importantly, go check out Season 1, then Season 2, then come back here, because I'm going into some full spoilers here. For sure. I was a little bit confused in the beginning because I thought it was only going to be six episodes and it ended up being nine. Now that could be a case of it being six episodes at a longer runtime per episode where this was nine episodes at 40 minutes, 44 minutes or whatever. Doesn't matter. Still awesome. Still great. And man, I don't think I can find too much bad about this. This is almost the equivalent for me of trying to review Breaking Bad objectfully because I love that show so much and anything negative I have about Breaking Bad is nitpicking and I've also seen some fantastic foreign shows that are on this channel you can check out the reviews for those as well and, and those ones are fantastic for different reasons this one was fantastic on its own right it's awesome and it's just it's a show that just gives me that energy and that tension and that anxiety and all the fun stuff that a show like a Breaking Bad brought. Uh, not only that, it brings the heart, it brings everything, and this season two did not disappoint in the least. From the moment that the professor talks his way out of getting out of the house, like the house, I thought he was going to blow up. All my theories in my top five theories video for season two, pretty much all wrong. And so he didn't blow up that house. There was some stuff in there that looked like he might have been tampered with. So the police couldn't necessarily just go off that. Um, essentially, it's Raquel trying to figure out who the professor is because he's the only one that's, you know, we don't know about. Uh, and there was a point where I almost thought that the professor kind of planted some evidence because they show him putting some evidence down. But I don't know from where i don't know if it was evidence from the other team but he didn't seem like the type of person that would give up the team so i was a little bit confused on that but it went away really fast uh we get this altercation with raquel's ex-husband who she brought in because he's a good profiler and he was able to look at the scene in a different way because i guess he's the best at what he does with that and he ends up giving uh the professor a ride professor eggs him on at one point because he really needed to get to that dna that he had because they were going to process it and ends up taking him down within seven seconds like a full chokehold and it was really cool because i didn't think the professor could throw down like that i thought he was you know they showed in season one that he was willing to do what he needed to do especially in the junkyard scene but in this one it's like no this guy could throw down take people down really quickly and they showed it a couple times too leading him to the police station and then him calling in raquel to come in there and her hatred for her ex-husband and the fact that he was able to like hit himself like go to that point where like he just kept beating the crap out of his stomach and she made a huge scene, ripped up his fingerprints, all that stuff, like so close to having all the information and then him getting out of it. Like he was, he played her to the best of his abilities, but the truth is he still had feelings for her and it really came to a head where he took that ultimate step when he found out that Angel was in a coma and they're saying he was waking up and he wanted to see because Berlin and him had a talk about, you know, it's a 99% thing, right? So when he, he put together that clown exhibit pretty much to pull people away and get the kid to go into the room with the camera and stuff which my only nitpick there is like did he always knew he needed a bunny camera or did he always have the camera and he was able to put it together like that was just again nitpicking but when she saw that orange fake hair from his clown suit and that scene in the bathroom when her realization was just crazy every emote that actress just killed it in that scene. And every emotion was coming out of her. Just the fact that she was played, the fact that she was so close, the fact that she was so blinded by what this guy was offering her, this guy that she didn't know in comparison to what she's had her entire life, all of that and how it's like compromised her and how that ended up leading to, you know, her coworkers and the, pe and the people in the tent and the other, you know, officers and stuff and SWAT, whatever. All of them now questioning her as being a part of it because she was with him the whole time. How could she not know? Like, it was very plausible that that would come into their minds. And the other thing, interesting thing it did is especially towards the end where now she's, you know, going to be arrested and there uh, there's a warrant out for her. It really showed us and it really made us think and there was a paradigm shift of who are the bad guys here? And nothing better than the the altercation of the, the exchange that the professor and Raquel had in his warehouse, because she had him tied up before he was able to get out of it. She even gave him a polygraph and there's a lot of truths that were coming out of there. He actually cared for her. Him explaining the plan to her and what it means to him was everything. That on its own was like, even if it was just 
two episodes of that, it was mind blowing. It was done so beautifully. And it was an homage to his dad because he was a sick kid and he blamed himself and he's doing this to honor his father and how the banks for years have been printing money and just dumping it back into themselves and keeping everybody down and all of these conspiracies that were tied up years before. And he's like, what's the difference? And that was a big thing. And who are the bad guys here? Who are the good guys? And when the police tried to send in like a camera crew and Berlin was able to switch it, like everybody else, the public themselves was like cheering for these guys, these people that are pulling a heist and create printing this money to take. And it was so awesome and it's so well done. And it really made Raquel question like, Going back into the people with the heist, because I know I talked a lot about the professor and Raquel, but those are some really poignant moments. The fallout with Tokyo and everybody else, and that scene where Berlin pushes her out in that cart, the way that that thing was shot was just bonkers. And I thought that was the end of Tokyo, which was really surprising, because I'm like, she's the one voicing this over. Like, how could she be out? And of course, the professor had that plan. She just needed to trust in it. And there was a real interesting, almost prisoner dilemma type of thing, like, Will they? Won't they? What should I do? Should I save my own skin? Is there? Are they going to sell me out? Because Berlin sold me out. And when that happened, that was interesting because Nairobi got to really get into the spotlight. Nairobi crushed it this season. I was wanting more of her. That was kind of one of my negatives. Uh, her and Helsinki. And Helsinki had some really sweet scenes, especially when he had to kill Oslo. That was heartbreaking because that was that was an act of mercy. But Nairobi's backstory with her altercation with Tokyo before she got wheeled out while she was playing Russian roulette with Berlin, which is just crazy. What she did there was, as an actress, was just so powerful. It really put her in the forefront. I put Tokyo in the back at that point, and Nairobi's right up front. Rio was kind of losing his mind, but, you know, like, Rio was fine. Like, he's just, he's the kid of the group. I didn't put too much stock into him. The other big thing, Denver and Moscow. Wow. So Denver, they're all accusing him of having Stockholm Syndrome, but he doesn't, and he actually loves this girl, and she actually loves him too, because she thought it was Stockholm Syndrome. She ends up becoming an accomplice because Arturo ends up getting a gun and pretty much go, wanting to escape and has Denver hostage. And while she was supposed to open the door, beats him over the head and they strap him with dynamite, which is crazy. And I really didn't like Arturo's character at all. There was nothing good about his character. I hated him from start to finish. And I kind of wish they would have blown him up. They're like that scene when they had him and he was sweating and stuff like that. I was really, really hoping for it. But more importantly, Moscow's interaction with Denver and Denver finding out the real truth about his mother such a great setup for what was to come, because when Tokyo gets saved by the professor's second crew that was digging from the other side, which we didn't actually meet until this season, but when she came back and she did that crazy ride through with the motorcycle, you know, the argument could be made, I'm pretty sure with all that machine gun fire, she probably would have gotten shot, but Moscow gets shot, that was gutting, I was heartbroken, and it gave us that flashback of him talking to Tokyo about how sh when you're stepping on stones in the water and this last stone you stepped on goes underneath, that's what she does. That's the type of person that she is. And she did that again. Like her coming back was what caused Moscow to die. And But it was able to resolve this tension that Denver and Moscow had because Denver knew he's, he's a good kid and he knew that he was going to regret it and his girlfriend came by and I, I forget her name so let me know in the comments but when she came by to let him know you will regret this if you don't go up that exchange between the two of them was just amazing uh, it was just so there was so much heart within the team and what was going on Berlin then kind of taking the reins back up again and got, kind of going on this this tyrannic rule over everybody but at the same time you you kind of realize that when he wasn't and things were going to hell they were going to hell like they needed to get this train back in they whatever you say about berlin and how crazy he is and how much of a sociopath narcissist all that stuff he was completely devoted he's a complete professional yes he's a psycho but he is the way he is and he's such a great character berlin and nairobi this season in general were just amazing also the professor and raquel's exchange but those two top notch and that ending, I was worried that they were all going to die. Unfortunately, Berlin was the one to die, but man, when that music kicked in, you knew things were going down. Just the way that scene was shot and that exchange he had with the professor and how the professor was wanting to bring everybody. He cared about these people. 
And that's what it really showed too. And when Berlin's selling Helsinki to blow it up and he's saying no and he's getting like emotional about the whole thing, of course he is. Because they had that beautiful exchange at the end of season one that they showed us in that flashback. And so they care about each other. And it was incredible to watch that play out. And just the way he went out, like the way he was explaining it and how he actually, like when, when he said that sitting there degenerate, degenerating and things falling apart in my body and stuff, that takes courage. And he says, that's not me. That Those lines there were so perfect for his character. For him to just bust out and start firing off and going out in a blaze of glory on his terms. Because throughout that season, because Tokyo had messed around and broke all of his medicine, like he was he was losing. He was starting to shake. He, he was feeling and stuff. So this was his only real out. It's almost like he knew what was going to happen. He knew that he was on borrowed time and that he was going out on his own terms And no one's going to tell him otherwise because his main thing is to make sure as he made Professor promise him that he was going to get out no matter what happens. It was just such a beautiful scene and it was shot so well and the only lighting you have, really the the, the more intense lighting you have, is from the gunfire and their own like headlights and stuff like that. So as it was going down, it was just almost like a strobing effect, but a very, very contained strobing effect. Until he was ultimately gone. They get away with it. In a very Ocean's Eleven way too. Where we see what happens when Raquel actually gives up that place. And she's sitting there, you know, handcuffed. And she says where it is. And they go there. And they're minutes away from catching them. And it was so cool. And it almost had like a Dark Knight feel. Like the opening with the bank. Where the buses kind of line up and stuff. Where, you know, the police are coming. And they're just riding all out. And then the team just starts slowly dispersing one after the other, like in the minutes to come. Nairobi, Tokyo dressed in a kimono, which is really cool, really fitting. Uh, Rio coming out in his skateboard equipment, Berlin and his new girl. And all of that was just, it just ended so well. And to put the icing on the cake, the professor had that little clue to her about where he's going to be because she had resigned. And it goes back to that first conversation they had, the very same lines. With the charger, the phone charger. And yeah, this is definitely a longer video. I can go on and on. I definitely probably, I most likely miss some stuff. I can honestly say in my life, this is probably one of the top five greatest shows I have seen. Some of you might say, yeah, it's very like Inside Man. It's very whatever. That's all fine and dandy. And we've seen tropes like this all over the place. But it was the characters It was the execution and it was the foresight that the show had that put it all together in such a great package. I love this show. I love this season. I love the way it closed out. I had a big smile on my face. I was freaking out legitimately worried about the characters at times. I was mad at them sometimes, especially you, Tokyo. The only thing I could say is I wish it would have brought us back to where who Tokyo was talking to. Now, they just left it as a voiceover. That's fine. I get that. I kind of was thinking that maybe she was either captured or talking to someone or whatever it was because she had so much insight to what was going on. And a lot of times when the voiceover does that, I don't necessarily lose interest, but I always have that thing of like, how would you know that? Okay. So that was the only thing I would say is in terms of a negative is the voiceover stuff, which I still loved. And it gave the insight that I needed and it gave the perfect exposition with the perfect amount of dosage. But then at the end, I was almost expecting her to you know pop up at, while explaining it to somebody hell maybe her own crew maybe she, her crew is you know and she's trying to prove herself to whatever it is either way this show kicks so much ass anybody that watched season two let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are again this is a longer video but i adore 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 this show and there was so much to unpack here and a lot of it's rambling because my mind's going all over the place because i literally just finished it so again Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on season two, the season, the series as a whole, the show in general, who were your favorite characters, what were your favorite moments, all sorts of stuff like that. Go to town and celebrate this show. So that's my long review of season two and kind of a wrap up of the whole series as a whole of La Casa de Papel. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following entertainment facts on Instagram. And until next time, I'm G, and I am out. Bella Tau, Bella Tau, Bella Tau, Tau, Tau.